Okay, for lecture 30, uh, which is, you could say special cases of linear programming, you could say special cases of integer programming, but you got to say that word special because these are problems which fit where the answers, the, 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 the options are 0 and 1 for the unknown x's. So they're, in that way, they're integer problems. You, you, uh, a, uh, um, we're looking at a zero or one marriages. M people are matched or they're not matched. And usually, integer programs are much harder than linear programs. Because uh, the simplex method, for example, for linear programs, you you allowed all those fractions in between until you hit a corner and you didn't know whether that corner had integer values. Now it's true. In the particular exam, example I chose, it turned out that the graduate student worked for four hours integer and the uh, others worked for zero hours. But uh, the general linear program with ax equal b is n not integer at all, and we don't have to think about that, which makes life much easier. We just solve ax equal b. If I add the constraint that the x's have to be integers, that is uh, normally a very serious difficulty. I get into exponential algorithms. There aren't polynomial algorithms. In fact, the, one of the million-dollar problems uh, offered, uh, proposed by the Clay Math Institute, uh, one of the seven, is this problem uh, P, whether P equals NP. So that P stands for polynomial and the NP stands for non-polynomial. The question is, to prove that there is no algorithm of polynomial time for certain integer programs. And that's an outstanding problem. Everybody thinks, well, I won't say everybody. Most people think that probably P doesn't equal NP, that there are some polynomial programs. Some, there are some of these standard problems that can't be solved you can't, there is nobody, there is no algorithm of polynomial length, polynomial running time that would do it. But to, to consider all possible algorithms and show that they all let you down is uh, an unsolved problem. So, um, but we do know, so what do we know? We have some problems like linear programming that we know are polynomial. This one is polynomial. We have a bunch of other problems that we know, if we could solve one of them, they're, they're equivalent, you could say. If there was an algorithm for one of them in polynomial time, then all the whole lot we could solve. So that's a whole bunch of problems that we believe can't be solved in polynomial time, and the best we've been able to do is to, is to get them in a, in a group and say if one could do it, they all could do it. If one can't, none of them can. Okay, now I want to speak about these special problems. That's the subject. And here I've picked a couple, three special problems, one, two, and uh, barely maybe a chance to mention number three. Uh, so let me tell you the marriage problem. First in words. Uh, so the marriage problem. You have a bunch of, shall I say girls? This sounds a little quaint, right? Girls and boys. Uh, G1, G2, G3, say four, four, and four boys. I'll take the problem that is described, uh, I think it's page 622 of the book, I think. Okay, now, so certain marriages, certain matchings are okay, others are not. So suppose all those matchings are okay. In words, 
all four boys are acceptable for this girl, so any, any matching is possible. But now let me look and see what the others were in this example. Uh, girl two, only boy four. Maybe I use some yellow chalk. To, so girl two, only boy four. Girl three, two and four. And girl four, only number two. Make that a dashed line, not because it's different, but just to, just to. Uh... So, I, I, of course, I'd like to create a matrix that describes this, this. Uh, it's sort of a graph, right? This this is called actually the f official name for this would be a bipartite graph. So so these are nodes in the graph. And the word bipartite means that it's got two parts, the girls and the boys, and all edges go between the two parts. Never, anyway, that's bipartite graphs. This is, these, everything I say today, there's a host of people that are just, have the knack of these combinatorial questions that, um, that it's become a very significant part of modern modern mathematics, pure and applied. Okay, so let me express the graph this way. The first row will tell the that the, all four boys are allowed. The second row will tell us that only boy one is allowed, or boy four. The second will tell us that two and four are allowed, and the third that only two is allowed. That would be the matrix that, so, so AIJ equals 1, AIJ equals 1 if girl I and boy J are okay, and otherwise 0. Right. 0 else. If not, okay. No edge. And What's our job? Well, a complete matching, so let me introduce a few of these words. A complete matching would be get everybody, oh, get everybody married. And the marriage problem is when can that be done? Can it be done in this example and what's the necessary and sufficient condition for doing it? Okay, so the, the ma and, and of course you'll want to, after the last lecture, you'll want a maximization problem, really, it, it, here. So the maximization problem would be, how many marriages can we get? Maximize the number of marriages. A complete matching means all married. Our problem would be to, our, our, if we can't, our problem would be to maximize the number of matches. So this is like a specific question, can everybody get matched? And then, if not, the optimization problem, the maximum problem would be to maximize the number of matches. And there's going to be some minimum problem, and the max will match the min at uh, duality, at, at the winners. Okay, now f for this specific, I would like first to ask this question. Is a complete, is a complete, or when is a complete matching possible? Sorry? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, good question. Because it certainly will have a matrix answer. Well, of course, a matrix of all ones would so that would be a case where everybody's willing to marry everybody, and the rank is one. I, it was my first thought was, what, what about the identity matrix? Well, the identity matrix, of course, that's a perfect, we have a perfect matching. Girl one, on, boy, only, I mean, they're matched, they're matched, they're matched, they're matched. Great. Um, 
Yeah, so somehow rank is somewhere hiding here. Uh, what about this specific example? Could I do a complete matching? And, and if you tell me why not, we probably have a guess at the general theorem. Why not? The answer is no. no. And what's, tell me the reason. Well, that's that's this question of rank. Uh, I, I, I'll in these in this language here of of uh, edges would be maybe the, the a way I'm looking and the words I yeah. Logically, if you go two and boy four, you're going to take them out, and then the next two rows, one's gone and. Got a competition for boy two at that point. Right. Okay. So now can we express that, put that into a way that doesn't pick out girl two as like guilty, or boy four, of course I should say, uh, or whatever. Yeah. So. Okay, but uh, I. Let, let me let me start the sentence. The problem is that girls two, three, and four say it again and louder. Two boys. Only like this. Only like two boys. We got three girls there that only can match. Are only acceptable. Only the only only matches are with two boys. So you can't do it. There's something, but but I, I'll, I'll stay with that language. So my, my 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 theorem will be complete matching is possible, if and only if. Now, how shall I express it? Every set. Why well, don't I better right right-handed here of girls? Say say K girls or R girls. Say, Every set of girls, every subset of girls, whatever, I'm thinking you take, take any group of girls, say K of them, K of them, must what? Much match. There must be at least K boys. That's clearly necessary. Right? If I have a set of K girls that don't, among them, like these three, that among them only connect except two boys, then I can't do it. So I've got, it, it's like that duality, weak duality that I had before. In some way, half of the theorem is going to be easy. Let me finish the statement. Every set of girls, K of them, likes together, uh, collectively, collectively, At least K boys. Certainly necessary. Not clear at all that it's sufficient. That if this worked, if every set of girls did like at least K boys, but that's the theorem. And that's that's the solution to the marriage problem. That, that, that this condition is certainly necessary. If I have a set of girls that don't like enough boys, there's no way I could complete the matching. Uh, the boy, well, these matches are made in heaven, so to speak. Uh, they're, yeah, they, I, I, I could, yeah, I could put an equivalent statement. I guess that might be, look different, but it, hopefully it would tie up. That if every set of K boys like collectively at least K girls, then that would be a, a, enough. Yeah, so I don't have to work both directions. It's enough to put it only in this direction. So, so that's the theorem. That, that uh, And we could create other examples here. Um, of course, if I fix this one by allowing, by this, this set of three girls, by 
getting a third boy into the picture for those three girls, then uh, I won't have any trouble to complete a matching. Where, where shall I do it? Well, I could connect girl two to somewhere else. Okay, now a complete matching is certainly possible. I just put a one in the position, in the two one position, I just put a one there by matching girl two and boy one. And now a, a, a complete match, a complete match. So now what's the complete matching? Uh, how sh well, this little set of three troublemakers is like they only like there are only three boys there. So I had better on that set. I that probably uh, I know that they have got to match with those three boys, and the theorem will say I could do it. So how can I do it? I guess well, let's use this new edge. Girl three could connect with that one. Ah, no, it can't. No, it can't. Three has to go with four in this case. Four has to go with two. Good, yeah, put it there. That's better. Okay, so I got a match. And then, of course, one who helped us out here is happy with three. So is that, have I now, have I done it right? I don't know that I've colored it well. Oh, because I used yellow for... Before before the optimum was written in. Yeah, it's like right. That's right. Okay, so uh, so I could go through the proof, which is quite neat and pleasant. That oh, I can outline the proof for you. Can I outline the proof that this that if this condition is satisfied for every, it has to be satisfied for every set of girls. So notice, to check whether it's satisfied, we haven't got a good way to do that yet. But, but if it's satisfied for every set of girls, then I could match them all. Uh, can I just mentally think of two cases? One case would be where every set of girls likes more than K boys. Like, so this is the room to maneuver case. How do you propose that I deal with that case in the room to maneuver case where every set of K girls likes? I'm going to prove this by induction on the number here. Okay. So if every set of girls likes more than enough boys, what shall I do? Well, for every set. Yeah, for every set. Well, that's true. The full set, the full N girls will like exactly boys, but all subsets, I've got give. Suppose that happens, what shall I do? Well, I just take the first girl. She can marry anybody who is acceptable. And then I look at the smaller, the remaining n minus 1 problem, and what's happening there. Now every set of those girls, well, I've only used up one boy. And I, I said in this case that I had room to maneuver, so I still am OK. All right with that? That's the easy one. Then the harder case is when there's some, I'm giving this proof without writing here. So should I write that? Case one, which I just dealt with, was uh, that for k less than n, that uh, uh, every subset has, subset has, uh, uh, more room to maneuver. An extra boy or more is is okay, and and uh, then we can just make an assignment, get to a smaller problem. We're okay. Now this the harder case is some set of k girls, some for some k less than n likes only n boys, only exactly n boys. Okay, how do I deal with that case? K, okay, boys. How do I deal with that case? And and still all sets. You know what I'm doing. I'm, so I'm assuming this is true. So all sets. It's not enough just to check any single set. All sets like enough, and some particular subset likes just barely enough. Now what shall I do? Okay, well, the claim is that those K girls, I can match them to those K boys, which I better do. 
Now, why am I able to do that? That's the induction step. That's, this is a smaller than n group, and it's, the hypothesis is satisfied. So by, uh, so it's a smaller problem, and I'm assuming that I've solved all smaller problems, and I'm now coming to n, the case of n boys and girls and boys. Okay, so, so A, match them off. This was a smaller problem, so already presumed solved. And now I have to, what do I have to do now? I've got, to, I've got the rest, the other n minus k, other n minus k, how do I deal with them? Well, I guess if I want to use, that's a smaller problem too. But I, then I would have to check that this condition but k of the boys are now used. So I have to check, at the other n minus k, I have to check this condition. Can I call this Hall's condition? There was a, a guy named Hall who, Hall's condition. I have to check, check Hall on the, these remaining, on, these, on, the, on the unmarried ones. Let's see. Sorry? Isn't that the same as your condition up there that I'll call them N minus K girls like N minus K boys? For these other guys? Yeah. Let's see. The thing is, we, we can't match them off with boys that were used right. by the first K. So we have to be darn sure That's that okay. these remaining girls like new boys. I guess that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You tag the K boys, they're out of the picture. They're out of the picture. The, so the other N minus K girls. Yes. Like, this is K girls and K boys, like the remaining N minus K boys. So, you know. But do I know that? How do I know that those remaining girls. That's the condition. I mean, that, in other words, if you don't have that, you can't, you can't. I can't continue, but I have to check that I have that somehow from the original, from knowing on the original big set. Uh, um, uh, um, see what I mean? What I, what I have to worry about is, hey, maybe some of these remaining girls only liked those same K boys. Yeah. And there would be something. Well, yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't, but but I, if necessary, I could have, but I didn't. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, we're we're right in the middle, exactly. Cooking this. Yes. Would have violated. I mean, there's you're you're in the. That's right. That's it. That's it. Including, th this condition in has to hold for sets of girls which included these K and some of these. And it's, yeah, then it becomes fun. I won't, like, spoil everybody's fun here. It's just beautiful that it works out. That, that if, I, if I look at a set of some of these remaining K, and then I add in these original K, and then I have to, then I look at the hypothesis on that. And anyway, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, 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 so I'll put, it's a check, and, and then we didn't maybe say all the words that need to be said, but it's, it's really nice. It's really nice. Okay. It, this is kind of off the subject loop. Yes. It doesn't sort of relate, like, I'm looking at that four by four matrix. All right, I'm ready to look back at that, yeah, too. I'm yeah. Yes. That's true. So yeah. Boys, yeah. And that's all they want. Right. But I, I don't really totally. Yeah. I don't. I don't. 
it, there isn't a perfect match between the singularity of the matrix or, or dependence of the rows and this. And let me show you actually what comes in with this matrix because it's quite fun. Uh, imagine those ones are rooks in a, in a chess game. Or, well, uh, let me uh, here. Let me state the problem. Let me state the problem this way: How many line? Okay, can I go back to zero here? My, my original one where it was trouble, where I could only match, where I couldn't match all four. Then the question is, how many could I match? Ma so the maximum number of matching. Here, here's the great theorem, because the maximum is going to equal a minimum in this thing. Is the minimum number of lines? that cover the ones to, and I'll put this in yellow, to cover all the ones in the matrix. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, we think, how many do you think was the maximum number of marriages in this original? Sorry that I've screwed up the picture. You remember the original with that matrix, how many, how many could we marry off? Three, right. So I believe that I can cover the, all the ones with three lines. Lines are horizontals or verticals. So that's where there's a twist. So somehow both boys and girls are in this picture. So how could I cover all those ones? Wouldn't be hard, right? First row and what? Second and fourth column, right. And I bet you somehow that tells me who's making trouble or something or who isn't or whatever. Yeah, maybe the, oh yeah, the zeros tell me who's making trouble. Of course, trouble's coming from zeros. So where are the zeros? The zeros are in girls two, three, and four and boys one and three. And what was the problem there? I had three girls and there's two boys they won't touch, don't marry. And... Yeah, so the zeros, I have, yeah, you, you see it. Okay, so yeah, so, so somehow that's, the, if I have a, so there's now the general problem. If I have a matrix of ones and zeros, I can ask how many lines it takes to cover them. Shall we create, a, I've never done this, but shall we just have another example? up here, of a bigger matrix. Can I, I'll just put in some ones and zeros at random. Uh, sorry, I'm just doing this totally at random without, a, without figuring out ahead of time how many lines would cover them. All right. I don't know. Do you think we could marry these? Get a perfect matching out of that. Well, I guess it's stupid for me to have started here because this five by five problem is not probably solvable in an in instant time. Uh, or could I cover it with less than four lines? Well, everybody's looking. Uh, I bet none of us. I bet. You say I need at least four. And probably I need five. Do I need five lines to cover that? Yeah, maybe even six. Oh, it doesn't want to take me six. I mean, even I can do it with five. Yeah, right. right, yes, <laughs> right. And that would mean that I could find a matching. Let's look for a matching. Hey, there might be one. Of course, what will a matching be? A matching will be a mar marriage, a set of marriages. And that means that the ones have to come from different rows and columns. Because each marriage is like, Unique. So maybe, suppose I, yeah, let me try to marry them, marry them, marry them. Whoops, better not. Let's see. Move the top one, yes. Move that way over here. Then this is okay. All right, yeah. So there I see that uh, I can marry all five. And I believe that tells me it takes me five lines. Now, somebody t tell me the reasoning there. How do I now know that I cannot cover those, all the ones, 
with less than five lines. How do I now know that? Don't, tell, don't say it for a minute. How do I now know? So the, the answer I claimed was five. I could get five matches. And sh I showed what they were. And I believe that the minimum number of lines, so this is like weak duality again. The minimum is five. I can't do it with less. How do, how do you see that I cannot cover those with five lines okay? Right. That's right. My line will have to, my lines have to cover all five of those, those circled ones. I don't even care about, I mean, just to cover those five circled ones is going to take me five lines. Right. So that's why, that's the weak duality. That the number of matches is always less or equal the number of lines. Because any time I've got a match, I've got uh, uh, some ones that I need that many lines to cover. Because a line can't cover two in a match, right? Okay. A li no line could cover two of these at once. A line can only cover one marriage and, and maybe some extra stuff. But it's going to take me five lines to cover five matches. You, you see that weak duality then has an easy argument but the equation, the, the fact that the number of, so I made it, I made, let's see, let me, let me, can I change this problem by changing some of these to zeros? Does, does that now, does that now prevent five matches? Fourth row, okay, let me make that a zero also. All right. No problem, because the fourth row goes to the left. So what else do you want me to turn into a zero? This one? Yeah. So if I make, I make that a zero. No, that's not a problem because then the fourth one goes on the last. Jeez. Right. So tell me, what to make a zero? Oh, if I put a zero there, yeah, but anybody can do that. Uh, I want to put one somewhere else. Well, all right, I'll do one, and then you'll tell me that that's not enough, right? That's definitely not enough. It's definitely not. All right. All right. So you, you say that's not enough? Uh, no, it is in that way. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm removing. Uh, Remember the bottom row. Yeah, this, so this, right. Okay, is, that, is a match possible there? Yes. It's still... It's, you've and still got a way to match those. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll take another one away. Uh, well, which would, I'll take one of these away. Yeah. Like that one? No, 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 no. That didn't hurt. That. Like that one? The first or the All right. Now we've got it. Okay. Now we believe that only the four, the, the, we can only marry off four, right? But now how do we prove it? Because you've got to find four lines that cover everybody. And that would say, now, what are four lines? First two columns. Yeah, just let me ask this question. Well, no, I won't. But just, so if I find four lines that cover everybody, then there could only be four matches. Because if there were five matches, I could not cover all five. All right, now, you, now I'm ready to listen. What four? Sorry? First two columns, and then two rows. Okay, and that left me a matrix of zeros, a submatrix of zeros, which should should tell me the trouble, where the trouble is. This this matrix of zeros tells me that girls, girls one, two, and four won't. Uh, don't obviously tells me that boys three, four, and five are no good, are not acceptable, and therefore, uh, so the only boys that are acceptable, for I have three girls, and the only boys that are acceptable are the remaining one and two. Yeah, is it one which is four or one, two, and five? One, two, and five. Two, and five. Was this one, two, five? Girl, one, two, and five. Yeah. Girls one. Let's see. I thought these zeros and these zeros and these zeros referred to, oh, yeah, refers to girls one, two, five. Right, 
refer, refers to girls one, two, five, and they will not match boys three, four, five. They only match boys one, two. And here I have a set of three girls and only two boys. One, two, and five. The only two boys are these two boys. Yeah. Yes, yes, I could express this in graph language, too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it, uh, you know, I, the problem sounds like a joke problem, but it appears all over the place. As it's a very, quite a fundamental matching. So that's why matching is the, or assign, sometimes assignment problem is the word used, but matching is the, and a perfect matching is, is complete matching. Yeah, so it's uh, so that's the matching problem. So maybe I could, and, and it connects to this type of bipartite two-part graph. Okay, um, uh, can I go to a second problem? But any question on this one? Yeah. Yeah. What happens if you like add in another dimension? Put three groups. Yes, uh, that. So a tripartite graph. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's that you're thinking like a graph theorist. I mean, this is how this subject grows, um, uh, and uh, and some directions lead to a beautiful theorem. Uh, they're all going to lead to some duality if you give me a linear program. Uh, but. Um, uh, as I say, I could have formulated this problem as a linear programming problem. But, and what's special about it is the corners would have turned out to be integers so that I only really had to look at integers. And, of course, that's all I did, just zeros and ones. Okay, could I try to tell you about this max flow problem? Uh, I'll take, let me take the example. So now I'm going to have a network. So now I'm doing max flow. Well, trees and graphs, and, and the example will be max flow. Okay. So, so, so graphs, networks, really networks, and maximum flow. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to draw a network here. And it will have uh, a source and then edges through the network, maybe uh, maybe some more intermediate nodes, and maybe some more intermediate nodes, and then coming maybe some more nodes coming down to a sink, S prime. Now, and I could connect some more of those. I've forgotten whether I do in the uh, in the problem here. Uh, let me just find, I'm just going to take the example that's in the book. Yeah, a few more connections are in here, here to here, here to here, there. Okay. Now, the point is, I'm going to give capacities. All those edges, the edges that are not in there have capacity zero, can't send any flow. And all the other edges, I'm going to put in capacities. And let me put those in in yellow. So here are the capacities of these edges, five, seven, and nine. So this was the sink, the source, source. Five, seven, nine, two, two on those vertical edges, one, 14, and one, one and one on those edges, and six, eight, and five on those edges. And I'm just gonna ask you, send as much as possible from the sink, source to the sink. How much flow? So that's the maximum flow problem. Max flow. Maximize flow from source to sink. And of course, what's the constraint? The flows have to be, so there's a flow on these edges, and the flows have to be non-negative, so let's say but they can't exceed the capacity. The flow less or equal to the capacity. That's where our inequality really comes on each edge, each edge. 
the flow has to be less or equal than capacity. Uh, I yes, I, I it's like steady state or something. I, I'm thinking of those. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've got a bunch of stuff at the source, like um, trucks or whatever, and I've got to send them to the sink, and I can't send more. So, for example, I absolutely my my capacity is certainly my flow is less than what. I certainly can't send more than five, seven, nine, twenty-one. Absolutely, but can I send twenty-one? No. Why not? You're solving my problem already. Yes. At the sink, I could only get nineteen to the sink. Okay. I can't even send nineteen. Now across the middle, I could send sixteen. But I can't get sixteen through. No. Yeah, this is fun, right? Yes. What, how, so what's your, since you spoke right, up first, you, okay. Yes. That's right. And then you can send one between the fortune and the Up and one down. Right. So your total, your capacity, your maximum is 12. That looks... All right, I think that sounds right. So just to repeat, the, there's, I'm going to create a cut and, and make the whole point here. There's a cut here. If I cut the network along that line, so these guys are with the source and these guys are with the sink, then... I'm going to look how many can I get across the cut because I have to get it across the cut. And if I can do it, the, what's the, so what's the capacity of that cut? Twelve. Twelve. The, the total to, that can cross is if I cross by that edge, one can cross. If I cross by that edge, one more. This way, eight. This way, one. This way, one. So if I'm going from this side of the cut to that side, I cannot get more than 12, just the way I couldn't get more than 21. I mean, we did a, you see the weak duality? As soon as I say, hey, I can't get more than 21, obvious. I can't get more than 19, almost as obvious. I can't get more than 16, almost as obvious. I can't get more than 12, less obvious. Sorry? Yes. That it's less obvious. Yeah. You could, yeah. 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 I could have made that cut jump out. Yeah. All right. Yes. But of course, to the computer, nothing is going to jump out. Right. So, so we, so in the end, uh, to solve a big problem, which would be beyond our capacity, we're going to hand it to the computer. So we're going to. The computer is going to be given the statement will be the capacities on all the edges and zero, zero capacity on the, on the uh, absent edges. And, and, of course, as you can imagine, we could allow different capacities in the two directions, which would make the problem a little harder, It'd be twice as many input for the, comp for the program to deal with. But still it would be an inequality set of inequality constraints and that would be a linear program. And the beauty, so the, what's, what's my main theorem here? Well, I've stated it, that maximum flow equals minimum cut. That's the duality. The fact that maximum flow is less or equal, that every flow is less or equal to any cut is clear. That's the weak duality that's easy. I can't send more flow across that, that barbed wire fence than the capacity of all the edges that cross it. Do you see what the capacity of the cut is? So the what's the, what do I mean by the capacity of a cut? Of a, of a cut. First of all, what is a cut? A cut is, and it didn't look quite as neat as, you don't think, I didn't, you thought I made that picture hard, but I, at least the cut looked reasonable. 
So a cut is any, any way of separating the source from the sink. Anything that I have to traverse, any like boundary. And the what's the capacity of a cut? It's the sum across. It's how much, it's the sum. I look at all the edges that cross the cut. How much can I send? That's the capacity of a cut. And then I look for the cut that's tightest. So then the dual problem is, of course, is a minimum problem. Find the cut of smallest capacity. So the capacity of the tightest cut equals the maximum flow I can send. Always going from from source to sink. That's that's right. If if the capacity was different both the two ways, I'm only going to look at the capacity that's going from the sink, sink source side to the sink side. Why, why do you think that always the way the flow would well, uh, It, the, oh, yeah, the optimal flow. All I'm saying is that once I have found the minimal cut, that's the, that's the tight one, and I better send everything. I have to send to, to, to achieve. The, so the claim is that there is some flow, that, that if this is the minimal cut, that I can fix up stuff here which isn't doing the minimum and fix up stuff here and maybe send it whatever way. You're right. I, I, I'm not... I'm only saying that across the cut, I'm going to go from source to sink. I'm not saying which way or how much flow goes on these other edges, because that's where things are slack. I've got extra capacity. It's like having extra ones here. I don't, you know, they're there, but I don't use them. But the ones that, the matching, the ones that I needed, I needed. And the capacity across that cut, I need it. Yeah? So if you made that capacity 9 instead of 14... All right, let me change would, one. Would that mean you can only get a maximum of 11 through there? Well... Because you can't apply 10 to... That looks... So you're saying, is the minimal cut now... now this? No, I mean, is, is the maximum throughput then to the sink as prime, is that going to be 11 instead of... 12? Well, I'm, I asked the same question. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, have have you have we reduced? Have we now found a cut whose capacity is only eleven? So the theorem would say, if that's the smallest, and probably it is, the theorem would say, well, we can get eleven through. That's the the if that's the smallest capacity. If the if the tight one now is is this cut, then. The we can send no more than 11, and the theorem would say, yep, we can get 11 through if that's the tightest cut. Do you see the, like the beauty of the, the elegance of the answer? That, that, uh, that tightest cut is exactly what you can get through. And, and you see that it is exactly constrained. It's the tight constraint. Yeah, that was a good idea to change a number. Should I change a, a, a different number just solve the problem once more. So let me go back to 14 here and let me change a few other numbers. Let me increase this 1 to a 3. I'm just doing this at random and reduce that 2 to a 1 and this 9 to a 6. Okay. Uh, is it clear enough? Can you see what those numbers are? So that's still a 1. Uh, well, I'm asking you to solve a problem on the fly here, but then you you think 12 is now the minimum? Yeah, what, seven and which 12? Where's the cut? The 7? Oh, through down here, through that 1, through that 7, through that 2 and that 1? So two one one seven two one twelve and that if that's a minimal cut then I can get twelve through. Well you just added to the other cut, that was the minimal cut, so therefore that cut became bigger and it's 
Yeah, let's see. This old cut, how many can get through there? One and one and eight and three and one. Oh, I, did I leave? No, I, I increased that, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, so 14 was that old cut, but now I, by reducing this seven, reducing, well, reducing some of these others, I reduced some other cut to 12, we said. So then the theorem would say, and we don't see immediately how, but with a little patience, we would figure out a way to send 12 through. If, if that's really, we couldn't send more than 12, that's for sure, because you've identified a cut with capacity 12. And then we've got some, so we would, we certainly know then we, we got to send full amount across that cut. We've got to send, you know, we've got to start on the answer because we know that we have to send seven that way and so forth. And, and, and you know, we know what all these one should be, and then we can fix the others to supply them where there's extra capacity. It's a beautiful theorem, and uh, it would follow from some general duality theorem of linear programming, but then there would also be some special um, uh, argument like Hall's uh, condition that would apply, and maybe I mentioned that the, this max flow min cut is associated with Ford and Fulkerson, where the sort of the combinatorial sparks who uh, identified that uh, um, problem. Is, is there some systematic way of determining what the cut is besides? Yes, that, there would be, right, yes. So the book would speak about that. Uh, I mean, w one way is say I could write the whole thing as a linear program and use the simplex method. But then somehow the simplex method should specialize to this problem, and and uh, um, you know those co those corners and so on should have a specific meaning in terms of flows and cuts. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. You only have one pipe. So, um, well, no. Think. Hey, hey. I'm. I'm a oil and gas. I'm George Bush in a previous incarnation. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I've got. I'm getting natural gas off the Gulf, out of the Gulf of Mexico. I've got pipelines going into the mainland, and I've got refineries there with capacities, and those pipelines are a real network of pipelines. Yeah. 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 That's sending electricity. Believe. Yeah, absolutely. Sending electricity to California. In this problem. Oh, I, so I'm not claiming that's most general. That this problem would fit every need. No. I, I could have multiple sources and sinks and make the problem more general, but more difficult. True. 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 No, I mean, I, 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 yeah. And you have, and you have like different, different like cables and different So it could be phone calls. Well. But if if you're calling one person in California, then and you're sending a packet which can get split up in different ways and gets, in fact, isn't that what, what at and is doing? It's taking your phone message, splitting it up into packets, sending them cheap ways, and, uh, of course, it's sending other packets at the same time. So there, there's another generalization. We've got a bunch of different pairs, source sync pairs, simultaneously trying to get their uh, message through. And then there's, what's the... Right. Yeah, that's my network. Yes. Right. Put, yeah, whoever, that, that network well, isn't perfect because somebody paid extra for this, paid for extra capacity that can't be used. Oh, yeah. 
That's right. But actually, in reality, that happens all the time, right? If I mean, a new pipeline is built from from Iraq to through Turkey or wherever, uh, adds more capacity. Well, then it turns out that, that maybe you know now they've got excess capacity. But the minimum cut is what's determining how much flow gets, you know, from the oil fields to the to the refineries. Yeah, and I could add a cost. Per node to 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 go through that node. Oh, you can imagine that I, as long as I stay linear, I I, I can make these things more general. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this this is really a good discussion. That you know, this is a model problem, but but uh, if we think about natural ways to make it closer and closer to reality, we still stay with. We still stay with uh, this linear programming framework. We can we can get a lot in. Well, no, I have to say though that multi-purpose. You know, so optimizing for multiple uses. There, that's that is really a different problem. You know, if if I'm optimizing, if I'm choosing the x's that optimize some function for several purposes, op optimize several functions at once in some way. Uh, that uh, there I'm uh, getting in, you know. Uh, by the way, game theory is another example of linear programming, and, and von Neumann discovered that slightly before uh, linear programming was discovered, but almost the same time. And people in the first years, even von Neumann didn't instantly know, and he instantly knew everything, uh, well, that it was the same. And do you, do you remember the name of the fundamental, well, I, I could talk about game theory, I mean, next time if you wanted, uh, among other problems. Uh, the fundamental duality there is called the minimax theorem. There's a minimax equals a maximin in the, in the world of game theory, proved by von Neumann, the minimax theorem. A minimum of a maximum of something is the maximum of the minimum of, of something. And... Uh, in two in the two-person game theory that von Neumann was about, that would match a linear. So that would match a linear program. I could think. This uh, probably not. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. I well. Um, the answer is, yeah, there's a duality in nonlinear programming. There is. But to tell you what the, if you tell me one of the functions to tell you what the other is, it's going to take me next week to do it. Uh, it's not just like easy. You see, I, I came up with that dual problem out of the blue, really. And, but it wasn't totally out of the blue. There was a, there was a, a method there that could apply in nonlinear cases, but not obvious. Anyway, game theory, two-person game theory would fit this uh, this uh, setup, and so the minimax theorem is a, is the duality theorem. Three-person games, you you know that's what John Nash won the uh, Nobel Prize for. He wrote a thesis, so I didn't mention the other key names. The, this optimality condition is associated with Kuhn and Tucker, and now I've written down the great names in this subject, and then. Uh, John Nash, who uh, wrote his uh, PhD thesis at Princeton under Tucker, to everybody's surprise, because Nash was a real character. Have you, do you know this book, The Beautiful, uh, A Beautiful Mind, about John Nash, who, uh, it's, it may become a movie, also movie, the movie rights have been bought, purchased. Um, it's by Sylvia Nassar. And it was on the bestseller list. And so it's a biography of John Nash called A Beautiful Mind. Um, uh, so he won the Nobel Prize a few years ago. But his life was a tra tragic story. Um, well, he was brilliant. And actually, for most mathematicians, for all mathematicians, the, the what he got the his PhD thesis that he got the Nobel Prize for was not in any way the most deep and difficult work he did. He went on to do prove remarkable 
facts in, in high dimensional uh, analysis. And then uh, schizophrenia uh, took over. So he had many, many years when he was first around the MIT math department and then around the longest time around the Princeton math department, but really out of uh, communication with people. Uh, it was difficult. And then incredibly um, recovered. So he gave a lecture at MIT a few weeks ago, in fact, which. Uh, where he had a standing room only audience. Um, I, I think people would feel he hasn't recovered to the incredible level that he had reached before his illness, but uh, still amazing to have recovered. So he was able to go to the Nobel Prize ceremony. And the book is quite uh, really uh, good reporting, uh, I think. It, um, by Sylvia Nassar. Um, so that's the story of uh, well, a few words about John Nash, and then the reason I mentioned it is that he the problem he studied was n person games. So if you have n people, three people is enough. Trying to maximize their profits. That's much, much harder than linear programming uh, because they can form coalitions. You know, any two could join up and say, okay, we'll, we'll be a team. But then if you, if a, then it may, after a little while, a person says, as they do in reality, hey, I'd be better off. This other person will bribe me to join him. And uh, so the coalition changes, and what's the best, what's the optimal strategy? It's so I could speak if you send me an email, choose maybe two person games. I couldn't do three person games. Uh, next, it's next Wednesday morning at nine, uh, it's the final pair of lectures. And uh, if you're willing to stay one more minute, can I tell you about a problem which maybe will be solved by next Wednesday, but maybe not? Uh, it's a combinatorial thing, and, and I'll just put it in the record, even though I'm, I don't know how this is going to come out. So the question is, I got into this in a discussion this week. I'd like to know if I, if I knew some entries in a matrix, could I complete the rest of the entries, say, so that the matrix had rank one? So suppose I knew... Suppose I knew these, oh, let me make my life easy. Suppose I knew those entries in a matrix. I, let me say those. Suppose I know, well, let me, yeah, well, let me, let me put in another entry. Okay. Suppose I know those, those, say those six entries could be anything. Could I finish the other three so that the matrix was rank one? What does rank one mean? It means every row is a multiple of every other row. It means every two by two determinant is zero. Every two by two determinant, because our typical rank one matrix, let's see, let me draw it, just write down a typical rank one matrix, say one, three, two, and then some multiple of that, and then some other multiple of that, say three, nine, six. Okay, every row is a multiple of the same row. Every column is a multiple of the same column. The rank is one. And every two by two determinant, say three, two, nine, six, is 18 minus 18. Every two by two determinant has to be zero. So if, I give, if, if, I'm, if I'm given any six numbers here, can I finish the remaining three to be rank one? I don't think so. Why not? This guy? Right, right. Okay, so this guy would be trouble, right? Because he's determined by making that two by two determinant and also by making this one. Oh, oh here I've got a two by two determinant. Oh, yeah, I'm already in trouble. 
Okay, so let's take out this guy. Okay. Okay. Somehow, right. So now, yeah. So it's like our our marriage problem. Okay. What about those five? Could I do it in that case? And or, and, and, or not? Let me see. We got many optimists. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, if so, if I think of it big picture, I'm given the first row. So then I take the second row, the right multiple, to make that come out right, and the third row to make that come out right. Or in terms of two-by-two two determinants, which you can see I'm plugging away, there's a little two-by-two, two, so that's determined. There's a little two-by-two, two, so that's determined. Then that's determined. Then that's determined. Let's see. Uh, should I erase these yellow ones and listen? Row two, column three. That seems determined by this one. Yeah. Ha! Huh. Has to satisfy two conditions. But, but, it might luck out. It might be that the number we needed in there was the number that, yeah, so I mean, this is exactly the reasoning we went through. We thought, oh, we're lost, but then we recovered. Yeah, so I think actually it would work. I mean, because it, the, what we put in there made that a multiple of that. And then... Two, you're right. And the, and the second square. And I'm saying that when we put that number in to make this square okay, we put in the right number so that it'll, it'll, be, it'll be kosher with both. But you're absolutely right. That's the right thinking. So, yeah, so that number that we put in there made these two, made these two little vectors in the same direction so that we can get a number in there. Yeah. So, so now the, you see the problem. So how do you find, what are the conditions under which you can do it or can't do it? Should I do one more example? Uh, at least, I, these, you're really seeing this just as it's being done. So we don't know. Let's see. Well, I better stay with three by three. I think I can't get six. I can't specify six. This is first step of my theorem. Have an undetermined one. Right. But but now I think I can't. Here's. Let's see. So here's. Okay. There's six. Well, that's sort of the question. Yeah, how many independent two by twos? That that is maybe the question. And I claim there aren't six. I think that one I can't do. But now tell me why. I, oh, maybe you can see why I can't. Why? If you, if you use your thinking now, I'll I'll have to give in. This guy is determined by this. One, but is there anybody fighting it? Oh, and these guys are fighting it. Right. And the bottom as well as this, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so at this point, we conjecture we can't get six in there. We can't specify six. So that would be my guess. I they couldn't couldn't specify six. Yeah. This is this won't work, but five could work. But five won't necessarily work, right? You could give me five that where I couldn't do it, yes, right? So you, you if if I had a two by two in there, it would fail. So you see, it's one of these cases where you where every size or the condition is that every size has to be okay. So here's my theorem, half proved, 
that can be done, marriage or whatever, let's rank one as possible, if uh, every uh, K by K submatrix has less or equal to two K minus one uh, specified X's. In other words, when K was three and I was looking at the whole matrix, five was the maximum. But then I also have to look at smaller matrices, two by twos, and be sure that I have less than or equal to three of those in any two by two. I'm only allowed to specify three, not all four. So I'm, I offer a prize, I guess, for the for proof that. So I can prove that this is required. I can prove that. In a K by K, I can't fit in 2K of them. It has to be less or equal to 2K minus 1. So this would be an example. I can't fit 6 in, but 5 I can fit. Right? Th that would be no problem. Can, can we just do that case? Doesn't mean any 5 would work. But these 5 will work because there's no reason they shouldn't. That's what, that's what this duality is. It works if there's no reason why not. Do you see that that would work? Yes, because, well, anyway, you see it. The, these two, these three would determine that. 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 And then, true enough, these would determine it, but it, we got a good chance. And it, no, no, well, it just has to do with if there's any X, it has to be determined by more than one of, of given, given X's. Of given of given ones, yeah, that's right, that's right. That's, that's the condition, because otherwise all the other things are specified in terms of multiple. Yeah. So how many does that here given? I mean, you have K by K, how many can you have If I have a 10 by 10 matrix, the maximum number I could specify would be 19, but then those 19 that I specify, I can't specify any 19. Any 9 by 9 matrix in that matrix can only have 17 of them. And any 5 by 5 matrix could only have 9 of them. And any 2 by 2 matrix could only have 3 of them. Otherwise, I'd be dead at that lower level. Like the marriage problem, it's where, where, where that smaller set of, or like the maximum cut problem, where a small number, a smaller subset was, was uh, putting the limit on. No, if, it, 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 I think we had a case where there were no two by twos, right, exactly. but that was a case with no t no two by two screw ups, but a three by three screw up. And so you have to check screw ups at every size. And then the theorem is, if you don't screw up at any size, just in counting numbers, then you can do it. And so what's the, what's the question? What's the, what's the, what's the, the proof. If, if I could, I don't know how to put in the X's, or I, I don't know how to show, yet anyway, hopefully next Wednesday is a different situation, that if, yeah, that if all these, if I don't have too many of any, in any size submatrix, then I can do it. The, both of the examples you showed, it was easier to verify you could do it. True. True, but that was because those were little examples. You're not believing my theorem, right? <laughs> and well, that's the best way, actually. No, no, no. No, no, what I'm yeah. Saying, no, I do believe it, but I'm saying maybe it's well, just included with the caveat. Okay. Well, yeah, it's so it's like the marriage, it's exactly like the marriage problem in that I have some condition, which I hope is the right one that just involves a little counting. And then the conclusion is that the whole thing can be completed. The whole puzzle, whole puzzle can be completed. And, uh, why is it different? Yeah, I mean, sorry, I, maybe it could be, 
it turned into the marriage problem. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Uh, I haven't actually, I mean, I realize right away that the condition we have is, is a marriage-like, marriage problem-like, a matching-like condition, so there ought to be a way. But I haven't seen it yet. I haven't had time to tell the truth. I'm, uh, normally, I wouldn't reveal a half-proved theorem, uh, but uh, it seemed appropriate here. A two by two matrix that yeah, the upper the upper left hand corner. Two by two. Two by two. You know, I fill in the first two entries in the first two rows. Wait a minute. How big is this? It's a three by three. Three process. by three. Okay. Uh, by, by the four X's in the upper the upper left left hand corner. Three by three. Put in. Sorry. Tell me where to put. So you're specifying these. Yeah. Those, those then you're dead. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, you're, you're okay, I'm saying you're dead because there's a because oh, okay. there's a sub matrix of size okay. two with too many with too many specified. Yeah. Right. Well, you need to specify the same two by two. If you can specify the same two by two, I mean, in these cases and all the cases, is that you found two matrices that specify the same point. Yes. Everybody is free to leave. It's ten to five now, right? Uh, uh, yeah. So let's let's come back to this hopefully with some new idea. Uh, Nine o'clock Wednesday. Okay. Thanks. Right.